Thank you very much, Mr. President, uh, uh, dear First Vice President, uh, honorable members, dear, dear colleagues, and uh, the students who came to visit uh, the European Parliament and uh, Committee of the Regions. I really would like to thank you very much for your kind invitations because I was here many times uh, before in my previous capacity where I was responsible for interinstitutional relations and where I was very often here uh, presenting you uh, Commission's uh, work program. So I'm very glad that uh, today I could be here with you to discuss one of the most important projects which uh, Europe uh, is now working on, the project of the Energy Union, and I would like to make it very clear from the beginning that your involvement, uh, involvement of uh, uh, Committee of the Regions uh, here in uh, Brussels, but especially on the ground uh, in the member states, in your regions, uh, is of uh, vital importance, uh, and uh, I will get uh, uh, into this in a, in a moment. And thank you very much for the good news uh, that the Committee of Regions will visit Bratislava. I know that you invested already a lot of thinking into the planning how the College of Commissioners and uh, the Committee of Regions could be at the same time uh, uh, in uh, Bratislava, marking the start of the first ever uh, Slovak presidency. And uh, I'm sure that it would be a very good event and uh, that my compatriots will do everything pos uh, possible to show their hospitality and, and make sure that uh, the meeting there will be productive uh, and uh, very, very useful. Dear Mr. President, we discussed the Energy Union for the first time, as you rightly pointed out, in, uh, in, in, in March. And I know that uh, already at that time you told me that the Committee of Regions wants to be very uh, ambitious uh, in this project. And uh, I also would like to thank uh, Mr. Laporteur, Mr. Pascal Manjean, pas simplement pour son travail, mais aussi pour son vidéo, qui est maintenant partagé avec uh, uh, avec nous uh, sur notre Facebook. Je crois que c'est très bon qu'on peut vraiment démontrer que les deux institutions, la Commission européenne, le Comité des régions, uh, vraiment travaillent uh, sur ces projets uh, ensemble avec la même volonté, avec la, la même uh, ambition. If you allow me to clearly tell you where we are right now with the uh, Energy Union uh, um, uh, strategy. I think that we are now already in the uh, full uh, motion and uh, therefore, as I said, it will be very important from now on to be in, in very close uh, uh, contact to make sure that we would uh, deliver the same uh, message uh, to our regions uh, around uh, the European Union. Because I'm fully aware, and that's one of the reasons why I started this Energy Union tour, that we cannot build Energy Union here in Brussels. Not from here in Brussels either. We must build it in our countries, in our cities, in our regions, in our villages, and we need to get uh, the support of our citizens, of our industry, of our stakeholders for this project, because this is project for uh, quite a few years. It would require enormous effort, and therefore we need to have very strong feeling of ownership for this project if we want to progress. And therefore, to work together on the secure, competitive and sustainable energy must be our common task, uh, not only for today's debate, but for many months and years to come when we'll be uh, proceeding the concrete uh, implementation of the energy union. You know that uh, the goal of the energy union is to make uh, sure that uh, we will be building internal energy market which would be based on solidarity among the member states and real cross-border flow of energy, that we would uh, need to improve uh, the diversification of our sources and suppliers, that we, need, uh, that we need to create conditions where we can better integrate uh, our uh, energy needs and to make sure that uh, energy contracts are fair to all our member states, that we can do much more in using uh, energy efficiency and we should uh, put this uh, principle energy efficiency first uh, as something which is operational, something which would be always uh, taken into the consideration when we would be doing our future energy plan. You discussed it already several times uh, uh, in uh, the Committee of Region, and you know how important, but at the same time ch challenging the task of decarbonization of our economy is. But we also know that if we do this well, which is of course our intention to be ambitious and uh, 
and uh, to remain leaders in this effort, that it would, uh, uh, that it would also make sure that as the leaders of uh, this global energy transition, we would be able to offer other parts of the world a lot and we would create very important export potential for our energy uh, companies. And for that, we need to make sure that we have proper underpinning of our research and innovation capacities with a very uh, focused attention and with very solid uh, financial support so we can remain in this leading position. This being in very uh, brief uh, description, the key building blocks of the strategy with uh, the European Commission adopted uh, already back in um, February of this year. We had a lot of debates uh, since that moment and I'm very glad to say uh, that the strategy was very positively uh, welcomed uh, by uh, the ministers, be it ministers of energy, environment, transport or, uh, or uh, climate change. It was uh, endorsed by the head of state and government in the March European Council, which is very important uh, uh, for this project because uh, the European leaders gave a green light to this project and, and gave us very, very strong mandate uh, to, to work uh, on this project and to start uh, with the implementation. But I'm also very glad to tell you that uh, the political groups in the, uh, in the European Parliament, uh, European institutions, uh, uh, and I know that also Committee of Region have a uh, positive uh, approach uh, to the energy union, uh, which I could really feel coming across from your debate and, uh, and from your uh, rapport, which is uh, under the preparation. If you allow me uh, uh, just to comment a little bit on the draft opinion paper, uh, which was uh, published by your ENVE section last week, uh, I uh, have to say that I very much uh, appreciate the scope, uh, the, the, the tone, and also the setting of the priorities uh, of the Committee of Regions, which I think are, uh, are uh, the same as the priorities of the European Commission. Because you, you want to focus the energy union on consumers, on promoting energy efficiency, on protection of vulnerable customers, you want to give adequate priority uh, to adequate interconnections to improve our uh, energy and transport infrastructure and to use the European innovation as a booster for employment and the importance of, uh, uh, and you underline the importance of external dimension of the uh, energy union, which of course is very important, especially if it comes uh, to the security of energy supplies for Europe. So what would be uh, the, uh, the, the next uh, uh, steps? How we make sure that we are progressing at the appropriate pace and uh, with uh, appropriate ambition and uh, energy? You will see our first concrete uh, legislative uh, deliverable already the next week. On the 15th of June, the European Commission plans to adopt uh, legislative proposals on uh, emission trading system on energy labeling, alongside communications on electricity market design, and also delivering uh, the New Deal promised uh, to our uh, energy consumers. With the uh, electricity market design, we decided to start at first with, uh, uh, with this uh, consultative communications because we fully understand uh, what kind of uh, landmark legislation we need to put on the table. Therefore, we want to consult with all of you, with member states, with uh, energy stakeholders, so, so we would be sure that when we start to draft uh, the concrete legislative proposals early, early next year, that we listen very carefully, we get all the opinions uh, 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 registered, and that we will have all the material we need to draft uh, appropriate uh, and good legislation. We uh, very much are looking forward to the further discussion with uh, the EU institutions, uh, also with uh, the Committee of Regions on these initiatives because we know that you will bring uh, very concrete experiences from your regions uh, into this uh, uh, debate. I also took a note of your legitimate concern and uh, the 
issue which was also highlighted by Mr. President in his introductory uh, remarks on the importance of involvement of uh, local authorities. And therefore, I really would like to reassure you that uh, I am personally convinced that the local authorities have a huge potential as a driving force uh, of a change uh, what uh, we are discussing today. And it's not only my personal uh, conviction, because this is politic line of this commission, as uh, I know you heard from the President Juncker, where he was uh, addressing your plenary last month. But above all, there is no other way to bring about the energy uh, transition other than working with the local uh, authorities, uh, because as it was uh, already pointed out very often, <coughs> the concrete competencies, uh, uh, concrete uh, powers uh, are linked uh, with uh, local authorities and therefore they must be very key, important uh, player in this, uh, in this whole framework. If you look about at uh, the energy uh, transition, we can say that it's mostly about decentralization of our energy production. It's about uh, the way how we can turn our consumers into prosumers, uh, what we can do uh, to increase the efficiency of uh, residential buildings, how we can smarten our cities and our electric grids, and how we can encourage more of a cross-border cooperation and ensure adequate cross-border infrastructure. And in all these areas, in all what I just mentioned, the local uh, authorities and cities uh, are indispensable and will have to play a very important role in this change. As you know, uh, honorable members, uh, uh, back in May I launched uh, the Energy uh, Union Tour, which to which I was just uh, uh, referring to. One of the reasons for that was to start kind of, let's say it, a political campaign for the, uh, for the Energy Union, because it was quite clear that you need uh, to bring this project uh, to our member states, to our regions, uh, to our cities, especially to our, uh, to our citizens, and, and just discuss uh, with them how, how they see it and show them what uh, the, the <coughs> Energy Union could, uh, could bring to their countries, uh, to their cities, uh, to their to they special, uh, they special needs. To be also very honest about the challenges, about the, the opportunities, about the difficulties uh, we have uh, with this project in that country, in other countries, in this region, or in, a, in another region. Because only in that case, we can create the atmosphere which allow us to work on this project uh, together. And probably you notice, especially if you are from those countries which are already visited, that I'm not meeting only national governments, uh, industrialists, uh, but also civil society, citizens, and uh, uh, regional representatives. Very often I'm meeting uh, uh, mayors and uh, regional ministers uh, in order to see how we can work better with them, what we can, we can do together to, to have this positive uh, spillover of our activities, how we can spread the word about the best practices uh, which we have many uh, in, in, uh, in uh, our European countries and how we make sure that we can replicate that positive uh, experience from these countries. Just to give you just, just a couple of, of hints. When I was in Budapest, I met with the mayor of uh, Budapest uh, 12 district visiting the smart building of cultural center, which uh, really completely changed the way how they produce the energy, how they treat uh, the waste uh, water, and uh, what was so important about this project was not only about that energy efficiency element, but the clear proof what the smart financing, uh, common effort and sharing of the profits uh, can do uh, for this particular district and how we can use it across uh, the other cities uh, in Europe. When I was in, uh, in uh, Torino and uh, met with Mayor uh, Fassini in there, uh, it was very clear that for him as uh, for many other uh, mayors, the issue of smart cities, how we can link together all our plans in energy, transport, and, uh, and the digital uh, agenda is very important. And in all these uh, areas which uh, would be decisive for making our cities smart, for making our infrastructure up uh, to the demands of the uh, 21st century and, uh, and the new uh, generation of our young people who are also called uh, uh, digital natives, uh, uh, is important. Uh, 
when I was in uh, Lower Saxony and uh, Dutch Northern region, I was impressed uh, how they are working together. Uh, there is no real border in between these two countries if it comes to energy cooperation, sharing of the assets, uh, common planning, and that's, I think, uh, the, the real, real examples for many other regions we can all follow. Last week, I uh, met uh, with the covenant of uh, mayors at the World Summit uh, of Climate uh, uh, and uh, subnational, of subnational actors and territories in, uh, in Lyon. First, I was very much impressed how the French presidency is taking this issue seriously. It was the whole afternoon when uh, uh, the President de la République, Monsieur Hollande, together with uh, four ministries responsible, uh, for the energy and climate change, been discussing this issue with uh, the participants. And I was very proud that the idea which, uh, which uh, was brought up uh, in Europe, creation of the Covenant of Mayor, is now getting the global meaning, that you have uh, mayors from all over the world who would like to join this platform, who want to work together to share uh, the knowledge, to exchange the best practices, and to, to support this very important uh, uh, agenda. If you allow me uh, to pass uh, to uh, describe some of the ideas how we can work better uh, together, how we can involve the Committee of Regions even more into the energy uh, related issues. I, I'm very glad that we already <laughs> established very good contacts, very good uh, exchange of views, that not only on political level but also on, on the expert levels we are, uh, we are uh, working very good together. Uh, I see that also the, uh, the area <laughs> and uh, the importance of the smart city concept, concept of the communities of the, of the future, uh, all the issues related to the smart uh, financing uh, could be the areas where we can uh, learn from each other, we can learn from your input, from your practical, practical experience, and uh, we can also uh, tell you what are the future plans, how we want uh, to optimize our work in these areas so that your regions can benefit from all these new instruments uh, we are, uh, we are uh, creating uh, together. I very much appreciate also the fact that uh, uh, your ambitions goes beyond uh, uh, Europe. Uh, and I'm referring spe specifically to the conference of regional and local authorities for Eastern partnership, but also of the Euro-Mediterranean regional and local uh, assembly and uh, the initiatives uh, to the already expanded uh, covenant and mayors. Because I believe that Europe must play this important role on international area we uh, uh, really are uh, the leaders if it comes uh, to the climate policy. We are working very hard to make sure that COP21 in Paris will be success. And I think that in the process of our energy transition, in our climate action, we already gathered a lot of experience which we can, uh, uh, which we can share with uh, other partners in the world. Mr. President, you've been referring to the importance of financing, infrastructure, and cooperation in this field. And uh, you also referred uh, to the fact uh, that uh, European Fund for Strategic uh, Investment, or as it became uh, known as Juncker Investment Fund, was uh, already uh, approved by the Parliament uh, and uh, by the Council. So I'm very glad to say that now it's operational and uh, now we have to start to use it. And I think that uh, the timing of uh, the adoption uh, of uh, this fund is uh, also very important because uh, you know very well how our European infrastructure became underinvested during the time of crisis. Until today, we are investing by 12 to 15 percent less than uh, we've been investing before the crisis started. We can all feel it on uh, our energy and transport infrastructure. We could feel it on uh, uh, the fact that uh, our uh, ICT infrastructure is not at the quality we would like to see it. And therefore, that uh, figure, which is rather staggering, that we would need uh, uh, only for the energy infrastructure something like 200 uh, billion euros uh, per year to make sure that we would catch up with that uh, lagging behind and to make sure that we actually can create physical condition 
for internal energy market to work, for free flowing of energy is uh, a very important fact to bear in mind when we will be using uh, the when we will be uh, using this uh, uh, strategic uh, strategic fund. If you look at what been the primary concerns of the member states when they've been sending the preliminary project which should be financed from the uh, from the strategic investment fund, it was quite clear that uh, the energy and transport are two dominant areas. More or less 29% of the project represented energy infrastructure and 29% represented the transport infrastructure. These are the areas where the member states also feel they need most help and most investment and this is where I think we need to go. Of course, we are trying to use uh, uh, the energy uh, discussions uh, this Juncker investment fund but also our structural fund which will be used in our member states in uh, this financial perspective uh, as uh, uh, the tools to make sure that we are going to use our energy in smarter way in more uh, efficient way and therefore we uh, are supporting and aim to support very much uh, the energy efficiency and all the projects which uh, which are uh, which are prepared for uh, for this uh, uh, for this area. So I think that uh, you can um, already see in it from the first decision of the EIB that the projects which been um, already uh, selected been a project which been boosting the renewables in Denmark, efficiency technologies in Italy, new transport uh, infrastructure in Croatia, just to name a few. But if it comes to energy efficiency, especially all of you who are working uh, 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 as a mayors or as, a, as a governors of the regions or in the local uh, authorities, you know how sometimes difficult it is uh, uh, to get the funding from the European banks or from the big banks into the smaller projects uh, in, your, uh, in your constituencies. And this is, I think, the role uh, which we have to do together where we need to uh, prepare the project which would allow you to help us to aggregate the necessary projects uh, and uh, which would allow us together with the EIB and with national promotional banks uh, to make sure that the financing for this project is coming. This is the idea which is behind our proposal to create smart financing for smart buildings in Europe because uh, you know that we have 75% of our buildings which are energy uh, non-efficient and where we can really uh, achieve enormous results if we use the, the technologies which already are on the European market for the better. If you allow me to conclude by a few words on energy security, which was the topic which was suggested uh, by Mr. President uh, uh, for the discussion with you, and of course it's a topic which uh, is very dominant in um, many discussions, especially those uh, related to overall security and uh, uh, related to the foreign policy discussions uh, which we have uh, on the European level as well. And I know that uh, this discussion is very much linked uh, to the worries and concerns linked uh, with uh, energy supplies. I'm from Slovakia and I remember very well the 2009 where the supply of gas was completely cut off to Central Europe and all our economy was just shut down for more than two weeks. We know what have been the consequences and we know that we do not want uh, uh, to repeat uh, that, uh, uh, that negative uh, experience uh, anymore. And therefore, I think it's uh, very important that uh, we need to make sure that uh, uh, we uh, will be uh, better prepared uh, in the future for such uh, possibilities. If it comes to electricity, we need to make sure that we have much better interconnections than in the past. Therefore, we propose to have 10% interconnection uh, target already for 2020 and 15% for 2030. Therefore, uh, we are working very hard uh, with our Baltic uh, countries and with Iberian Peninsula to make sure that uh, they will be much better integrated into the main European energy system that they are now because we can benefit a lot uh, from their better integration than they can benefit from much uh, uh, bigger energy security if they are better interconnected with the rest uh, uh, of Europe.
Uh, if it comes to the uh, gas supplies, it's quite clear that uh, the name of the game here is diversification, just to make sure that uh, each of uh, our countries had, has much better possibility uh, to get uh, the supply from at least three different sources through different routes, uh, from different suppliers to make sure that uh, we can let the market forces to, to play the games. We can let the, the market pressures to push down of the prices and we would always have uh, enough of options to make sure that whatever happens, we will have enough energy for our citizens and uh, for our industry. And we are going to confirm this approach also in uh, our security of uh, gas supply regulation, which would like to revise uh, most probably in the autumn of this year and learn from the recent gas stress test, but also in our LNG uh, strategy and storage for the European Union, which we are working on and which also would like to present uh, uh, to you uh, before the end of the year. At the same time, we are working very hard on uh, other diversification projects like Southern Gas Corridor, which should bring uh, the new Caspian gas uh, through the new uh, route to Europe before 2020 and make sure that also if it comes to the pipelines we have a possibility to decide, to choose and to test the new route and the new sources of, uh, uh, of supply. And of course, once the progress on the Minsk uh, uh, agreement uh, will be clearly seen, I hope that we will have a chance uh, uh, to start working with our Russian partners on the relationship which would be rebalanced, transparent, based uh, on a solid uh, commercial basis uh, and uh, on uh, its mutual advantageousness for both parties because uh, this is uh, how the major energy exporter and the biggest uh, energy uh, importers should base their relationship on on a mutually advantageous, transparent, commercially based basis. And this is what I think will be uh, the uh, criteria for the future. So Mr. President, I really would like to thank you very much for, for uh, giving me this ample time to describe you uh, where we are with the Energy Union, uh, how we started, how we are progressing, what's ahead of us in coming weeks and months. And I very much thank you for this opportunity and I'm very much looking to our debate. Thank you.